Fox at panfox.org and in today's video I am going to talk about frequent coughing and how that is really a textbook, it can be a textbook symptom of um, hiatal hernia, of GERD, and especially of LPR or silent reflux. Um, and keep in mind too, when you know when I talk about uh, textbook symptoms of, of hiatal hernia, um, the, the symptoms when it comes to hiatal hernia are so vast and so diverse. And one person may have one symptom and another person may have 10 symptoms. One person may have you know, even no symptoms. So it just, it's just really, it's really kind of a, well, I hate to say a mysterious disease. I mean, it is, it's, it's not so much that it's that it's, there's just really a lot to understand about it. And there are a lot of different holistic things that you can do to support the reversal of a hiatal hernia. So in today's video, we're going to talk about um, frequent coughing. Um, and it's important to understand that um, when it comes to LPR, if, if you've been diagnosed with LPR, which is laryngopharyngeal reflux, um, then you also have GERD. So a lot of people think they can have, that they have LPR, but not GERD because they don't have the symptoms of GERD, which happens all the time. And that's a kind of a real strange thing. And I'll talk about why that is in a minute. But, um, if you are diagnosed with LPR, then you have GERD. GERD is simply gastric esophageal reflux disorder, which means you have acid refluxing up from the stomach. So in order to have LPR, which is acid up here high in the esophagus, you have to have GERD because it's gotta make its way past that lower esophageal sphincter in order to make it to the upper esophageal sphincter. So whether you have symptoms of GERD or not, if you have been diagnosed with LPR, you do have GERD. And so the reason I bring that up is because this helps us to understand that the true remedy to overcoming LPR or GERD is to reverse your hiatal hernia if you've been diagnosed with a hiatal hernia. Now, if you have LPR, you may not even have a diagnosis of a hiatal hernia, but chances are that you do have one or that you have a, what I call a pre-hiatal hernia, which in all honesty isn't even a real thing. I just call it that because your stomach, I was actually just reading um, an article this morning from Dr. Michael McGregor, and he was talking about how one in five Americans have a hiatal hernia, but in African populations where they eat primarily plant-based, so very little uh, meat, dairy, and eggs, just mostly sweet potatoes and corn and grains and fruits and vegetables, they rarely see hiatal hernias. It's just really, really uncommon. Like maybe a one in a thousand, I think, was the statistic. Um, people have a hiatal hernia. And, they, and he was saying how, diagnostically speaking, when they, when they look at a, um, an image in the U.S. Um, of someone's stomach, the, the stomach is almost always parallel, or, the, hiatal, or the, the lower esophageal sphincter, you know, that valve where the esophagus meets the stomach here, the little valve, it's almost always parallel with the diaphragm. So it's just sitting right up in there in the diaphragm. And then, in, in, again, in these plant-based communities in Africa, the stomach hangs out way down here. So the lower esophageal sphincter is well below, it's well below the diaphragm. So, um, hi Hector. Um, I don't speak Spanish, but hi Hector. <laughs> um, so, so the reason I bring this up is because it, it just makes it very clear to see that in order to um, truly overcome our symptoms and the conditions of LPR and GERD and hiatal hernia is to reverse your hiatal hernia. It's to move that stomach back down to where it belongs so that the anatomical pressures that the hernia creates up here in the diaphragm are no longer present, which means we no longer have that pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter. And certainly this is just one thing that we need to do when it comes to reversing a hiatal hernia um, holistically, meaning we're doing many things to support that, that healing um, you know, you need to get the inflammation down in the gut. If you've got constipation or bloating, those need to be addressed as well. But certainly unhurting, herniating that stomach is, is at the top of the list of priorities in terms of reversing a hiatal hernia. So um, chronic coughing. So when it comes to chronic coughing, it's one of those cyclical things that occurs when it, when it comes to symptoms of hiatal hernia. This is pretty common where we have, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. And so with chronic coughing, um, we have the, co the coughing itself um, 
when we cough, our abdominal muscles contract and pushes the stomach up against the diaphragm and pushes the diaphragm down against the stomach. And so the act of coughing itself further contributes to the hiatal hernia and, and supports the continuance of the hiatal hernia. So if you have chronic coughing, that coughing is actually supporting the continuance of your hernia. So that's why it's really important. This is one of the symptoms that's really important to get under control. Unfortunately, again, the cyclical thing, the, the, the coughing supports the herniation, but the herniation ca can cause the coughing. So, you know, if we have acid rising up, making its way past the lower esophageal sphincter and making its way up past the upper esophageal sphincter, now that acid is irritating the tender tissues of the throat and that can cause, um, you know, a sore throat, clearing of the throat, constant coughing, a lump in the throat, all kinds of issues with the throat. And why is that? Well, you've got acid coming up and, and coming up and burning the throat. Acid digestive enzymes known as pepsin. That pepsin likes to kind of linger around um, in the soft tissues. And then when we, whenever we eat food that is highly acidic, so it can be soda or alcohol, meat, dairy, and eggs, junk foods, we eat these highly acidic foods and um, that will bind with that pepsin. And then what does pepsin do? What do digestive enzymes do? They digest. And so they're going to begin to then digest and injure the, the tissues of, of your throat. And of course, when the body senses something there that's causing injury, it's going to want to rid itself of that. And so you're going to have <clears throat> constant clearing of the throat. You're going to be coughing. Clear, um, and so, yeah, so the, the hernia itself is can be causing the symptoms and the symptoms are causing the hernia. So it's this horrible cyclical thing. But again, if we can reverse the hiatal hernia, we're going to be in a much better position to heal and, and no longer have those symptoms. So if, we're, if we can keep that acid in the stomach where it belongs, then it's not going to rise up. It's not going to cause problems in your esophagus and in your throat and the tissues then can begin to heal. And then you won't have the constant clearing of the throat and the coughing. Um, if you have other conditions that are causing chronic coughing, if you smoke, if you have allergies or asthma, then those need to be addressed as well. Obviously, you need to quit smoking. Um, I was able to completely, I don't like to throw out the word cure because I still have allergies and asthma, um, but I am symptom free. I was able to go from a lifetime of chronic allergies and asthma. I was on five different medications at one point. I was taking eye, uh, prescription eye drops, prescription steroid inhalers, fax stacking inhalers, nasal drops, um, allergy medications, pills, um, all in an attempt to manage my chronic allergies and asthma. And I was still symptomatic all the time. I mean, horrible sneezing and coughing and wheezing, itching and, um, I went on a plant-based diet within two weeks, those symptoms, lifelong symptoms just went away. And I've been doing it for four and a half years now and I am still symptom-free. Now, do I still have allergies? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm allergic to a lot of stuff, but I'm not symptomatic like I used to be. You know, if I were to go, like one of the things I'm really highly allergic to is cats. If I were to go to somebody's house with cats, I'd probably be able to last about an hour before I would start sneezing and wheezing so the allergies still remain, but I used to not even be able to go into somebody's house with cats. I might last five or 10 minutes and then I'd be sick for days after that. So it's a huge difference. So I just want to throw that little plug out there for plant-based nutrition. Helping people reverse their hiatal hernias is, has become like my thing, my big passion in life. It's become my life's work. But nutrition and plant-based eating will always be my heart. It's, it will always be, it's, it's, it's really the, the it should be the first therapy, you guys, when it comes to addressing any conditions you have. I don't care what, if you have aches and pains, if you have allergies, if you have fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia diabetes, heart disease. I mean, nutrition, nutrition has to be your first line of therapy against these things. You know, and if, it, if, if a plant-based diet doesn't do for you what it did for me, you know, then you can go from there. But for so many people... Oh boy, I'm just getting way off track. So let's get back to the coughing. So, um, okay, so Barbara, I am going to, let's see, did I say, yes. 
So I'm going to show you an exercise, something that you can try. Now this, this exercise, you know, again, everybody's hiatal hernia is different. It just depends on how deep it is into the diaphragm, how old it is, how many adhesions that you have there, you know, how tightly it's lodged up into the diaphragm and holding on. Um, so what I want to show you is a, a, something that you can try while you cough um, to help prevent that squishing of the stomach against the diaphragm. So what you want to do is an exercise that will put a little bit of space between your diaphragm and your stomach as you cough. Okay, so that when you cough, and you can try this right now, guys, you can cough and put your hand on your stomach, which is on your left hand side, cough, and you'll feel your abdominal muscles contract and push against your hand. And so what's happening internally is that pressure is pushing your stomach up against your diaphragm. And if you're in a slouching position, then it's pushing your diaphragm down as well. So the, the, what I'm going to show you is just a way to put a little bit of space or something between your diaphragm and your stomach so that when your stomach does push up against your diaphragm, there's something, there's a little bit of defense there. There's something intervening so that it's not pushing against your diaphragm, but instead it's going to be pushing against your hand. So, so I'm going to show you this. Um, so, you know, when you put your hands on the small of your waist right here, right above your hips, I'm going to go ahead and pull my shirt up so you can see. So your rib cage is here and the small of your waist is here. When you put your hand right there, that's your stomach. That's your stomach. So you really want to relax your abs and stand up tall when you do this. Really just let the stomach go. The fingers are right there and you're just going to squeeze a little bit. Bump like that. It doesn't have to be super hard. It doesn't have to be really deep. If you're really overweight, this may or may not be effective. You're just going to have to try and see if there's a lot of fat there between your hand and your stomach. But again, what this is going to do is when you cough, and you can stand in that position right now and just do um, a pretend cough, and you'll feel your stomach. You'll feel it pushing against your hand. And so that's just going to hold it down a little bit so it's not cramming against your diaphragm. And you know, in the case of hiatal hernia, it's already up there in your diaphragm, but, but your stomach, and again, when I stream live, everything is reversed. So this is my left side. This is my left side. But your stomach, you know, the esophagus comes down here, and then it, your stomach comes over here, and there's, um, you know, you just want to kind of catch the side of it here. So by doing this, you're kind of catching the side of it, and then when you cough, it's going to push against your hand instead of fully pressing against the diaphragm. And then, so you can try that and see if that helps. Um, just kind of get in the habit of when you cough, place your hand there and cough so that that has something to press against. And then when you're done with, you're done coughing, this is just an exercise I call kneading dough. And again, this is the left side, and I'm just using the palm to gently massage my stomach down to help move it back down. And I know that kind of seems, that might kind of seem silly, like you can't, like, I know it seems like you can't move your stomach down, but um, it doesn't take much to kind of shift and move those organs around. Because of the attachments, yeah, they're not going to freely move as much as you want them to. But if you practice that daily, if you stand up tall, which will lift your um, diaphragm, if you relax your abs, which will give that belly room to move down and do some deep breathing into the belly, which will expand your belly and really give that stomach room to move down and practice that um, gentle massage downward motion every day. Those adhesions will just stretch a little bit more every day and a little bit more every day. Um, and ideally, one day that stomach will fully um, unobstruct from the diaphragm, unherniate from the diaphragm. And when that happens, you'll know. You'll know if you're symptomatic as you're doing the exercises because um, ideally you'll get relief. You'll feel relief once it herniates because it will relieve the pressures that it was creating. Now, of course, the exceptions would be is if you have a very damaged, um, oh yeah, if you have a very damaged esophagus from a long time um, burning from the acid, that's going to take time to heal. But once you remove acid that's burning your esophagus, um, it will start to heal, right? And that's the other thing I want to mention really quick. I said I would talk about is the reason why we have LPR without symptoms of GERD. And there's a couple explanations for this that are pretty easy to understand. One is because 
the one, your, your stomach is lined with a mucous membrane that protects it from acid, right? Because acid acidifies, it burns. And so your stomach itself has a mucous membrane that protects it. Now, when the stomach comes up to the, into the esophagus, the tissues of the lower esophagus do still have a little bit of that protective lining, not as much as the stomach, because acid doesn't belong in the esophagus, but the, you know, the human body does burp and regurgitate occasionally and vomit, so there is a little bit of protection there, but not enough to have regular ongoing acid exposure. Um, and in some people, there's more protection there than others. Um, and then, you know, and in some people that have had so much acid reflux that all that protection has kind of burnt away. And then it's, and then others, it's created so much scar tissue there that down, down low, they don't necessarily feel any symptoms until it gets up higher where there is no protection from, from the acid and from the burning. So as that acid rises up higher and higher and higher, there's less and less defense against that acid. So for people who are diagnosed with GERD and they have symptoms up high and not down low, that can be kind of confusing because that acid is traveling, obviously it's traveling through the lower part of the esophagus, um, but they don't feel it until it gets up higher. So that's a couple of explanations as to why that can be. Um, but regardless, nevertheless, at the end of the day, um, when it comes to hiatal hernia, GERD, or LPR, I hope you can clearly see that the true remedy, the true, you know, getting to the root and really fixing this problem has to do with moving that stomach down and getting it unherniated. And this is possible. It can be done. Um, I'm proof of it and I'm helping people do it every day. So I hope that helps, uh, Barbara. If you, if you have any questions, you can post those in the comments below. And um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.